Welcome everyone. Today we will discuss on hydrogenation which we were discussing in the last class. Mainly today's focus will be on the dihydride catalyst. You have seen in the last class that monohydride catalysts are usually having a hydride, one hydride in their starting material. But the dihydride catalyst are the one which has no hydride to start with, but after initial activation we will have two hydride with the metal center. So therefore the name came from the fact that it has no hydride to start with and then upon oxidative addition to hydrogen it has two hydride with it. Last class we have also seen that dihydride catalyst can be of uh, various types. Some of the very popular dihydride catalyst exist such as Wilkinson catalyst, we have seen that rhodium based catalyst. We have also discussed briefly about the Stock Osborne catalyst and as well as the other iridium based catalyst, sometimes those are quite familiar and uh, famous such as those which are known as Crabtree catalyst. Now of course we are not going to discuss each and every catalyst in detail, but we will give an overview of these catalysts so that one can understand when to use which one. For example, the, um, the, the Wilkinson catalyst we were discussing in the last class mainly used for monosubstituted olefin and disubstituted olefin. For example, uh, the Stock Osborne catalyst we will be discussing today will be used for mono, di, tri, even, even tetra substituted olefin. So that makes it quite general in terms of its use. Let us try to look at the Stock Osborne catalyst. So, Stock Osborne catalyst, as you know, is a rhodium based catalyst. Stock Osborne catalyst, and it is the starting material which is uh, more important to understand. We will have olefin, two of them, okay, and the rhodium catalyst, it is so rhodium center is there, and the phosphine, it could be two of those alkyl phosphine plus X minus. Now, this is the counter anion, which is a non coordinating, non coordinating counter anion. So, what are those? Those could be you know BF4 minus, PF6 minus and so on. It is also important to understand that non-coordinating counter anions are very important for lot of catalytic activities. For example, in uh, Wilkinson catalyst we have a very coordinating counter anion such as chloride right. Chloride is very much coordinating therefore it will coordinate with the metal center tightly. Some other non-coordinating counter anion such as PF6, BF4 and like BARF some is called BC6F5 or different fluorinated version of benzene ring. These are the huge counter anion and that makes the metal center more of a electropositive because these counter anion are not going to coordinate with the metal center tightly leaving a lot of positive charge on the metal center. So making the metal center more of a electropositive in nature is important for lot of catalysis because those you know weakly coordinating substrate can be coordinated due to the fact that the metal center is not neutral or having more of a positive charge. So counter anion plays a crucial role in a number of catalytic cycles where weakly coordinating substrate may be coordinating with the metal center by virtue of having not so coordinating anion. Okay. Now let us look back at the at the Stock Osborne catalyst. Now this olefin, of course, olefin two of them we are saying you can have one olefin which one substrate which will have two olefinic count uh, pa partner such as norbornene or uh, norbornadiene. Okay, so this would be norbornene diene. Okay, we can uh, as you know we can have. Cod cyclooctadiene, C 
cyclooctadiene chord. So, both of these are di coordinating or two olefins are there as you can see over here we need or we have draw, uh, written the general formula as two olefins. Now, of course, this, this is as we are trying to discuss the catalyst is this catalyst particularly is good for hydrogenation. Now, if we are taking olefin to start with in the catalyst itself, then that means that of course, you know these olefin are the one which will undergo the hydrogenation at the beginning. Now, why these olefins are required to start with? Because it provides the support to the metal center so that other unwanted reactions are not happening. It is acting as a weakly coordinating ligand which at the beginning of the reaction will fall off from the metal center. Therefore, will create the coordination and saturation. So, there will be space now for the exogenous or external olefin to bind at these places at these places where norbornadiene or cyclooctadiene was coordinated. So, let me repeat it again repeat it. Uh, so, scored that cyclooctadiene which is having two olefin norbornadiene which is all again having two olefinic center these are coordinating to the metal center. In the starting material we have these di olefinic center so that they can sacrifice themselves during the catalytic cycle. What is why it is required to sacrifice them because if they are coordinated your olefin which you are interested in doing the hydrogenation reaction of will not have the required position required vacant site at the metal center to coordinate. In any way these rhodium catalysts are very good hydrogenation catalysts when the substrates are associated with them such as norbornene to start with or cyclooctadiene to start with these are the fragments which will undergo hydrogenation very quickly. Upon hydrogenation of these norbornene diene or cyclooctadiene will have a vacant coordination site. Now, these vacant coordination sites are the one where we will have the olefin of interest which could be a very important olefin we want to do the hydrogenation reactions of will coordinate. So, the role of these olefin norbornene diene and cyclooctadiene is to provide the support initial support and then sacrifice themselves in the process so that the most important reaction which we are interested in can undergo the hydrogenation process. Okay. Now, let us look back one more time at the stock of bone catalysts and as we were discussing upon hydrogenation first thing we will generate is rhodium P let us say R equals phenyl P P H 3 2 and a cationic species. This is again important to understand as we were discussing the counter anion is P F 6 or B F 4 minus. Okay. So, any of these counter anion can be there which is which is the um, uh, which is the non coordinating one therefore, rhodium center is ready now it has vacant coordination site it has only two phosphine associated with it it is ready to bind with the olefin we need. Of course, in these cases you will get uh, you will get this uh, um, saturated partner. So, from norbornene diene you will get this one completely saturated one or from cyclooctadiene from cyclooctadiene we will get we will get the corresponding saturated one without double bond. So, these are the initial products of course, you know since the catalyst is required in very very tiny amount the amount of this product formation will be very less and they do not usually interfere with your main hydrogenation reaction. Okay. So, now we have generated the real active catalyst this is the one which is the real active catalyst this is the one which is the dummy one, but this is the one which will get it commercially because commercial source has to be stable. This one if someone wants to sell it, it is very difficult to sell because it is not that very stable air and moisture sensitive perhaps it would be therefore, storing it will be difficult you need a version which is you know uh, solid which is uh, stable for quite long time 
and therefore just at the beginning of the reaction uh, before even entering into the main catalytic cycle you will get your real active catalyst that is important uh, to understand. Also another thing is important uh, to understand is how to really how really to get rid of some of these uh, you know ancillary ligands or those supporting ligands as we have seen uh, we have norgonadiene, we have uh, cyclooctadiene. Uh, how can you get rid of the supporting or the you know secondary supporting substrate from your main active catalyst? So there are similar things available. For example, over here we have utilized hydrogenation for promoting your um, your hydrogenation of the cyclooctadiene. But then there could be other fragment, other let's say alkyl fragment or uh, you know suitable like halide which can be get rid of by different method. Let us look at the processes. If you have uh, some, some substrate which you need to get rid of, how to get rid of common group, get rid of common group, common groups. So what are the common groups? Let us say olefin. So we know that the process to get rid of this will be hydrogenation, right, very well. CO carbon monoxide if we have we can get rid of the CO by light okay. If you have a hydride you can get rid of by this one okay. If you have X minus let us say for example chloride you can get rid of by silver. If you have R minus of course you can get rid of by H plus. So there are uh, as you can see different partner which we can get rid of depending on our need and there, there exist a number of uh, different reagents that we can use. Of course, in the last class we have seen for your um, you know, Wilkinson catalyst, we are having a system where the first step of the catalyst was really the hydrogen gas addition to the metal center. That means the oxidative addition is going on first and then olefin coordination is happening if you remember in the last class. Olefin coordination really is not proposed to be happening before oxidative addition of hydrogen. So first step is the oxidative addition of hydrogen, then olefin coordination, then beta migratory insertion of one of those metal hydride, subsequently reductive elimination between the remaining hydride and the alkyl frag fragment to give you the hydrogenation of the entire olefin to give you the alkene. Now in this case of stock Osborn catalyst, so that was we were discussing about the Wilkinson catalyst, but in case of stock Osborn catalyst, what is important to understand is the first step is going to be the olefin coordination. So in the Wilkinson catalyst first step was the oxidative addition, in stock Osborn catalyst first step is the olefin coordination and the second step in the stock Osborn catalyst is going to be the oxidative addition which is the uh, oxidative addition of hydrogen gas and then of course same beta migratory insertion and reductive elimination follows to give you the saturated product. Let us try to look back at the catalytic cycle of stock Osborn catalysts. So again it is important to understand that this is the catalyst which is effective for hydrogenation of pretty much everything you can give hydrogenation of mono. If you do not want to try way too many catalysts, different catalysts for different hydrogenation, of course, this is the one of the preferred one you can go for mono di tri and even the tetra tetra substituted one substituted olefin you can you can get the hydrogenation of okay that is fine that is uh, quite okay. Now we would like to look at the catalytic cycle let us say phosphine is P triphenyl phosphine as we were saying we, do, we are not going to draw it it is a cationic species okay rhodium cationic species. Now the first step would be the olefin binding right so olefin should come as we are discussing as you remember again uh, for the for your um, Wilkinson catalyst first step was the oxidative addition. In this case first step is the olefin coordination as you can see 
and the second step is the oxidative addition of hydrogen and this is the one which is found to be the rate determining step RDS that is the slowest step and the most important of all and then that will give you the olefin coordination along with the hydride uh, intermediate again you have a cationic species. So, this is going to be your 16 electron species if you try to count this is going to be a 14 electron species and uh, you know this is the 12 electron species to start with 14 electron this is going to be the uh, 16 electron species overall then what will happen is beta migratory insertion one of the hydride will insert into the into the olefin. So, finally, what we will get is the rhodium hydride and then alkyl intermediate along with your uh, this phosphine phosphine bound as you know remaining step that is left is the reductive elimination between these two groups where uh, where this whole moiety and this whole moiety will undergo reductive elimination to give you the corresponding alkane product ok. So, <coughs> what we have seen so far in this catalytic cycle simply is the bicoordinated rhodium ok which is a 12 electron species. So, 2 phosphine and rhodium in 1 plus oxidation state it is a 12 electron count and from there on what we see that olefin coordination occurs that gives you a 14 electron species and again a cationic intermediate from there of course, a counter anion is there pf6 or bf4 for example and from this 14 electron species you will have oxidative addition of hydrogen to give you the 16 electron species. Now, this is the species which will undergo the beta migratory insertion into the olefin to give you the alkyl intermediate as well as metal hydride monohydride intermediate. This monohydride intermediate uh, with the alkyl undergoes the reductive elimination reaction to give you the alkane product. So, this is the catalytic cycle of course, in the process you regenerate rhodium species with bisphosphine associated with it which is a 12 electron species. Let us look at the catalytic cycle drawing one more time. So, this is the 12 electron species olefin coordination occurs. So, give you 14 electron species then oxidative addition of hydrogen 2 hydrogen oxidatively added or hydrogen atom oxidatively added. So, this is a rhodium hydride this is a rhodium hydride and now you have a 16 electron species this was rhodium 1 plus now this would be rhodium of course 3 plus overall it is a cationic species 3 plus 1 minus 1 minus still it is cationic this is the one you started with a cationic this is 1 plus this is of course 1 plus. So, overall phosphine neutral phosphine neutral rhodium 1 plus cationic intermediate 12 electron species rhodium 1 plus olefin neutral phosphine neutral phosphine neutral overall it is a cationic species 14 electron species oxidative addition into the hydrogen gas that is HH you get oxidative addition into that you get rhodium hydride and rhodium hydride 1 minus 1 minus but this is now 3 plus. So, overall again it is it is 1 plus from there one of the hydride for example, this one will undergo beta migratory insertion both of them can go actually beta migratory insertion to give you the from CH2 CH2 you get CH2 CH3 alkyl group. Now, this alkyl and the hydride both of them will undergo reductive elimination. Now, these are the two hydride or hydrogen atom that is coming from this hydrogen gas overall you get from from olefin from olefin this olefin you get the alkane species ok. So, so far we have seen there is a subtle difference between the Wilkinson catalyst and the Strock Osborne catalyst. As you have seen right now first step of the Strock Osborne catalyst is the olefin coordination. Of course, there is a pre first step the before the first step happens there is a step where uh, the sacrificed or you know sacrificing reagents such as norbornadiene or cyclooctadiene is getting hydrogenated. After that you get a 12 electron diphosphine coordinating intermediate. Now, from this intermediate you see that um, that olefin coordination occurs and then oxidative addition of hydrogen occurs. But in case of in case of your uh, Wilkinson catalyst first step is the 
oxidative addition into the hydrogen and then olefin coordination. Of course, remaining steps are similar or exactly same uh, when you try, when you compare Wilkinson versus shock osmosis. Another thing important is if you if you uh, try to look at or if you remember specifically the, in the last class we tried to discuss that um, you know the Wilkinson catalyst none of the steps in the Wilkinson catalytic system is uh, spectroscopically characterized. On the other hand for the shock osmone catalyst um, actually of course A, B and D if, if you are saying this is A, this is B, this is C and this is D. A, B and D, these three steps are spectroscopically characterized. So that gives of course a feel good feeling that these are the one which is really, really existing over there. Of course, this is the one which is found to be the red determining step and overall then, uh, then there is a very subtle difference between these two catalytic cycles. If you are mainly looking for monosubstituted um, olefin, unsubstituted or monosubstituted olefin hydrogenation, I guess this Wilkinson catalyst is best. But if you are looking at specifically, specifically um, higher substituted like di, tri substituted or even tetra substituted olefin, I guess shock osmone catalyst is a better option uh, for hydrogenation of olefin. Okay. Now, in the next class, we will discuss the uh, the, the asymmetric hydrogenation and little bit more on hydrogenation. Well, till then you read about the uh, the Strock Osborne and the Wilkinson catalyst and their differences and what type of substrate they can be effective for. With that, um, you know, see you for the next class. Take care. Bye bye.